So the last video I made was about evaluating heat stress. And it was supposed to be 84 degrees that day. Uh, no, it was supposed to be 86 degrees that day. And it was supposed to be the hottest day of the week. It turned out that it was 90, had a heat index of 105. But they were marginal. Some of them were panting a little bit, but you know, they looked pretty good. So I went ahead and let it slide. Next day I checked the forecast and it's supposed to be 84. By noon it was 80, 88. By the time I got over here about 1.30, it was 92-ish heat index of 108. And uh, had cows with their tongues hanging out. It wasn't, wasn't good. So I just went ahead and made an alleyway across two, well, across that field and the next 10 acre field and run them over here to these back 10 acre fields here against that tree line. I got lots of shade over there. So I just strip them going this way. By the way, they get a little bit of shade every day. And, uh, did that for about a week and a half. We finally got a cool down. So I built a couple more alleyways, went back finished grazing that 10 acres not that I needed to but it's always good to get the extra grazing when that that field's never grazed after about June June 5th the 10th is normally when it starts getting too hot to do anything with it so got an extra grazing out of it this year it'll grow back good for the winter I won't hit it again until probably November 15th deer season, Thanksgiving, somewhere in there. But now I've got them over here. This is one of my best fields. It doesn't look real thick. Just looking down in it. But it wears you out walking through it. You kind of see you know, when the cows walk through it, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's deep. I mean, it's up, the blades are up over my knee. If you straighten them out, they can be up to hip high. But I've been culling cows every year just for being open in the fall. And nine times out of ten, the open cows are the ones with the old, rusty, reddish brown looking dead hair on them. That 319 cow I showed in that last video, she's one of them. She keeps breeding, so she'll stick around, but they're looking better this year. So I guess culling them that way is getting rid of the ones that don't tolerate the heat. Hell, right now it's only about 80 degrees been raining all day it's nice out here but you can kind of see how that fence is 32 inches off the ground there's parts of it down through there where the blades are up to the fence That's what they just come off of, and I run them pretty hard over there. This right here next to the fence was, I had a lane built, I'd stripped them going out this way. I built a lane going back up to the water up there. So they've ate more of this down than they should have, but that's just part of it. Normally when I build a lane like that, that's where a lot of the manure gets concentrated, a lot of the urine, and it comes back first, despite how hard you might graze it or stomp it into the ground. There's one of the South Pole bulls. He has injured himself. Blew a hip out, which I'm getting pretty used to. Happens about every year, one of the bulls goes down. Everybody tells me I run too many bulls. 
But when that happens to you all the time, you just learn that an extra bull never hurts. There's the other one. He's still looking pretty spiffy. Breeding pretty aggressively. I'd like to take him up to Stratford and have him jumped and put some semen in the tank, but I don't know. I don't think it's that expensive. Just getting him out of the herd this fall to do it. I had another bull I was going to show you, that younger yearling bull. I bought, but I don't see him. I'll do another video later.